Welcome to this James May's Head Squeeze Hangout with the European Space Agency. I'm space physicist Martin Archer coming to you live from Imperial College London and it is my very pleasure to once again say hello to ESA astronaut Paolo Nespoli who's live in Rome. Hello Paolo. Hey Martin, uh, nice, uh, nice being with you again. Today is a, is a special day because going on right now, um, Luca Parmitano, um, ESA astronaut at the ISS, is doing an EVA, an extravehicular activity, which to you and I means a space walk. It's actually been six weeks till the day that the Valare mission launched to the International Space Station, where we first talked to you, Paolo, all about what life on the International Space Station is uh, like. And it's going to be a great pleasure to find out what space walking uh, is like today. As a power, could you just remind us, you know, what is the, the purpose of this particular spacewalk today? This spacewalk today was one of the uh, roughly two spacewalks uh, uh, that are carried out uh, um, every year uh, in order to take care of tasks uh, that have accumulated, little tasks they have accumulated here and there. Uh, usually, if there is an emergency on station, uh, then the crew goes out for an emergency spacewalk. But if there is no emergency, just regular tasks, uh, little things that break up here and there, or things that need to be changed, then uh, periodically, and it's about twice a year, uh, they actually do a regular maintenance uh, spacewalk. Today, this is one of them. That's great, Paolo. Um, so this is Luca's very first spacewalk, and you were saying that you've uh, gone through a lot of the spacewalk training yourself, but Luca is the very first Italian spacewalker. How does that make you feel? There's a little bit of jealousy going on there? at Luca with a little bit of envy but uh, I mean Luca it's a great guy uh, he has done uh, a lot of training he's very well qualified he's doing very good and I'm just happy that uh, finally an Italian astronaut uh, managed to go out and do this very interesting and essential task I still think I still keep uh, uh, the record of being the first Italian that has done a long duration mission he can have the first one of doing a spacewalk I think we're going to go to uh, David now, who's at Imperial College, because he wants to know a little bit more about the risks involved with spacewalks. David, put your question to Paolo. Hi, Paolo. Um, just wondering how, how worried astronauts are about the risks of space debris, and is there anything you can do about it? Is there anything to mitigate the risks? The space station has a, um, a shield. Now, you don't have the luxury of having this shield when you're out on a spacewalk. And so you accept uh, there is a little bit more of a risk that the small uh, uh, space uh, uh, fragment, uh, meteorite or something like this comes and hits you. Uh, while uh, there is the risk, uh, the risk is very, very small. And so far in all the spacewalks that have been uh, conducted, there was never uh, was a case. In case this uh, would happen, um, the suit is made so that uh, an emergency, so if there is a hole in the suit, an, an emergency system kicks in and starts uh, pressurizing the suit uh, while the oxygen uh, is lost in space, there's, there's still this pressurization that takes over. And you do have uh, about uh, half an hour of time, uh, which is the time that you are required to come back into the airlock. And we do get trained for this. Wow, there's a lot of things to, to think about when, uh, when you're doing a spacewalk from the sounds of it. It must be a lot of things going through Luca's mind um, to keep him on track. And I guess that's why the ground crew have to be very precise about what's going on. Uh, we've got another question now from Twitter. This is from Data Chick and says, do you have any different dreams on the station? The dream uh, themselves, uh, at least for me, they did not change. I dreamt the usual things. And by the way, I don't usually remember my dreams. So... Uh, the only one of the difference though is that you have to get used to sleeping kind of floating falling asleep uh, floating because here on the ground we actually have gravity that uh, uh, makes us or let us assume a certain position you know head down or stomach down or whatever and people cannot cannot assume their own position in space so you have to get used to uh, to um, uh, uh, falling asleep floating as you have to get used when you wake up in the morning for the first days, the first weeks, I would say. You open your eyes and you have the distinctive feeling that you are upside down. So you start turning 
you, you start turning and, and try to, to, to ride up yourself. And of course, nothing is happening, creating a little bit of confusion. And then it's like, oh, yes, I'm in space. This is the normal feeling. OK, OK, OK. I should, I should stay calm and keep going. We're going to go to the International Space University now to get a question from Su Chan. My question is, how can the astronauts communicate with the Goanda Control Center? Will they always keep communications? with Goland during the spacewalks, which seems to last for almost seven hours. Thank you. Hi, Su Chan. Uh, hi, everybody, again at the International Space University. Great university, great course you have up there. Uh, I bet you're learning a lot. So um, communication protocol, uh, it's one of the areas that we get a lot of training on. Because uh, obviously, when you're talking to somebody through the radio, uh, you need to use a special uh, protocol uh, in order to cut down on the amount of communication, in order to be coincise, in order to express uh, what you want to say and, uh, and, and be careful on, on what's going on. Uh, so each one of the two astronauts have a radio inside their suit uh, with a backup, actually, so in case of a problem. And they are actually talking to a transmitter that is sitting on the station. All are outside the station, there are several antennas, so they can talk, uh, uh, the signal can go to several antennas, so if they are hidden somewhere, they always can get in, in reach of an antenna. Then the station takes the signal and throws it over the space to ground down to the control center in Houston. Paolo, thank you for all of your answers. You've been absolutely fantastic, as, uh, as usual. Um, of course, if you want to watch the spacewalk that Luca is doing right now, you can do that live at ESA.int. And, uh, of course, subscribe to Head Squeeze to find out when, hopefully, we'll be talking to you again, Paolo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Uh, thank you, everybody at ISU. Uh, thank you, Dr. Foster at the Imperial College of London. Thank you. I mean, you are so many, I cannot... Uh, I, I don't have the capability of thanking everybody, uh, but we'll keep he look, keep looking, keep uh, being uh, involved, uh, keeping be. I mean, I, I like I like looking at these things because I'm thrown into space. Uh, my imagination go go wild, and we need uh, once in a while to think in these terms to really make sure that we keep dreaming and we keep doing the impossible.